Hello, dear listeners. Today, we are going to dive into the rich world of Japanese folklore. We will venture into the magical realm of mermaids with a compelling and touching tale titled Under the Cherry Blossom Tree. This story, originally written by the renowned Japanese author Agawa Mime, beautifully captures the essence of ancient Japanese folklore and will surely captivate your hearts. So, sit back, relax, and let's embark on this enchanting journey together. Mermaids do not only live in the southern seas. They also inhabit the northern seas. The color of the northern sea was deep blue. One time, a mermaid woman climbed onto a rock, resting. While looking at the scenery, the moonlight that leaped from the clouds illuminated the waves melancholically. Looking around, there were endless, monstrous waves undulating. What a lonely view, the mermaid thought. They don't look much different from humans. Compared to fish and various wild beasts living in the deep sea, one may not know how similar they are to humans, both in heart and appearance. Despite this, they have to live in the cold, dark, and depressing sea like fish and wild beasts. She wondered why this was so. The mermaid couldn't bear to think about how she had lived for many years. Without anyone to talk to, always longing for the bright surface of the sea. On nights when the moon shone brightly, she would float on the surface of the sea rest on the rocks, and indulge in various fantasies. They say the towns where humans live are beautiful. Humans are said to be kinder than fish and wild beasts. We live among fish and wild beasts, but we are closer to humans. So there's no reason we can't live among them, the mermaid thought. The mermaid was female, and she was pregnant. We have lived in this lonely, conversationless, blue sea of the north for a long time. We no longer desire a bright, bustling country. But we don't want our unborn child to experience these sad, helpless feelings. Separating from the child and living alone in the sea is the saddest thing. But as long as the child is happy wherever it is, my joy would be unparalleled. Humans are said to be the kindest in this world. They never bully or torment the pitiful or the helpless. Once they take care of something, 
they never abandon it. Fortunately, we not only look like humans, but our upper bodies are exactly like humans. Even in the world of fish and wild beasts, judging from where they live, there is no reason we cannot live in their world. Once a human picks up and raises a child, they should never cruelly abandon it. The mermaid thought so. From the sentiment of wanting to raise her child in a bustling, bright, beautiful town, the mermaid woman decided to give birth to her child on land. If she did so, she would never be able to see her child's face again. But she thought the child would join the humans and live a happy life. Far away, the lights of the shrine, on a small hill on the coast, flickered among the waves. One night, the mermaid woman swam through the cold, dark waves to give birth to her child, approaching the land. There was a small town on the coast. There were various shops in the town. But there was a shop selling small candles at the foot of the mountain where the shrine stood. An elderly couple lived in that house. The old man made candles, and the old woman sold them in the shop. The townspeople and nearby fishermen would stop by this shop to buy candles. Before climbing the mountain to pay their respects at the shrine, there were pine trees growing on top of the mountain. The shrine was in the middle of them. The wind blowing from the sea hit the treetops, roaring day and night. Every night, the flickering of the candlelight in the shrine could be seen from the distant sea. One night, the old woman said to the old man, our living like this is all thanks to God. If there wasn't a shrine on this mountain, we couldn't sell candles. We must be grateful. With that thought, I will climb the mountain to pay my respects. You're right. The old man replied, I thank God every day, but I'm so busy that I don't often go to the mountain to pay my respects. You've made a good point. Please express my gratitude as well. The old woman set off. It was a clear moonlit night, and it was as bright as day outside. After paying her respects at the shrine, as the old woman descended the mountain, she found a baby crying at the bottom of the stone steps. What a pitiful abandoned child. I wonder who left it here. It's strange that I noticed it on my way back from praying. If I leave it here, 
I'll be punished by God. I'm sure God knows we're childless and has given us this child. I'll take it home and discuss raising it with my husband. The old woman said in her heart, picking up the baby. Oh, you poor thing, you poor thing, she said, carrying the baby home. The old man was waiting for the old woman to return. When she came back holding a baby, the old woman told the old man everything, and he agreed, saying, Indeed, this is a child given to us by God. If we don't raise it carefully, we'll be punished. The two decided to raise the baby. The child was a girl, and from the waist down, she was not in human form, but had the shape of a fish. The old man and woman thought she must be a mermaid, as they had heard in stories. This is not a human child. The old man said, looking at the baby, I think so too, but she's such a gentle, lovely girl. Regardless of whether she's a human child or not, the old woman said, Indeed, whether she's human or not doesn't matter. This is a child given to us by God. So let's take good care of it and raise it. I'm sure she'll grow up to be a smart and good child, the old man said. From that day on, the two carefully raised the girl. As the child grew, she became a beautiful, shiny-haired, quiet, and smart child with big black eyes. The daughter grew up, but she was ashamed to show her face, because her appearance was different. However, everyone who saw her once was surprised by her beautiful features, and there were even those who wanted to see her and came to buy candles. The old man and woman said, our daughter is shy, and doesn't like to appear in front of others. In the back room, the old man was diligently making candles. The daughter thought that if she drew a picture, everyone would be pleased and buy the candles. So she told the old man about it, and he said she should try drawing a picture she liked. The daughter drew fish, shells, and sea plants on the white candles with red paint. It was natural and well drawn without learning from anyone. The old man was surprised when he saw it. Everyone who saw the picture wanted to buy the candles. The picture had a mysterious power and beauty. No wonder it's good, it's drawn by a mermaid, not a human, the old man explained, discussing it with the old woman. People came and said, give us the candles with the pictures, and from morning till night. Children and adults came to buy them at the shop. Then, the candles with the pictures were popular with everyone. Then a strange story began. It was rumored that if you went out to sea, with the remnants of a candle with a picture, which had been offered to the shrine on the mountain, you would never have a disaster such as capsizing or drowning, no matter how big the storm. It's a shrine dedicated to the sea god, so if we offer beautiful candles, the god must be pleased, the townspeople said, in the candle shop, because the candles with pictures sold well. The old man was making candles from morning till night, and the daughter was drawing pictures with red paint, enduring the pain in her hand. I must not forget the kindness of those who have raised me, who is not even a human being. The daughter felt in her gentle heart and teared up with her big black eyes. This story spread to distant villages. Sailors and fishermen from afar wanted to get the leftovers of the candles with pictures offered to the god. So they came all the way from far away. They bought candles, climbed the mountain, visited the shrine, offered and lit the candles, waited for them to burn down, then took them and went home. Therefore, the fire of the candles in the shrine on the mountain never extinguished, day or night. 
especially at night, the beautiful light of the lamps could be seen from the sea. Truly, the god is grateful, was the reputation in the world. The mountain quickly became famous. The reputation of the god rose like this, but no one thought about the daughter who was wholeheartedly drawing pictures on the candles. So there was no one who felt sorry for the daughter. The daughter was locked in her room, drawing pictures on the candles with all her heart. However, even when the elderly couple saw it, they neither found it adorable nor pitiful. Sometimes, on a moonlit night, the daughter would stick her head out of the window, miss the far off, blue, blue sea of the north, and tearfully gaze at it. Once, a peddler came from a southern country. He was going to the northern country to find something unusual, take it back to the southern country, and make money. The peddler, from somewhere or when he saw, the daughter, realized she was not a real human but a truly unusual mermaid. One day, he secretly came to the elderly, couple's place and offered to buy the mermaid for a large sum of money. At first, the elderly couple refused, saying, this daughter is a gift from God. How can we sell her? If we do something like that, we'll be punished. But the peddler came back again and again, insisting, since ancient times, mermaids have been considered ominous. If you don't get rid of her now, something bad will surely happen. In the end, the elderly couple believed what the peddler said. Moreover, it was a lot of money, so they greedily decided to sell the daughter to the peddler. The peddler was very happy and went home. He said he would come to pick up the daughter sometime. When the daughter found out about this, she was astonished. The shy, gentle daughter was afraid to go to the hot southern country. She didn't know and leave this house. She cried and begged the elderly couple. I will work very hard, so please. Don't sell me to go to the unknown southern country, she said. However, the elderly couple, who had already become heartless, would not listen to the daughter no matter what she said. The daughter was locked in her room, drawing pictures on the candles with all her heart. But even when the elderly couple saw it, they neither found it adorable nor pitiful. Sometimes, on a moonlit night, the daughter would stick her head out of the window, miss the far off, blue, blue sea of the north, and tearfully gaze at it. We have now reached the end of, under the cherry blossom tree. I hope you enjoyed this emotional journey, and gained a deeper appreciation for Japanese folklore. These stories, rich with cultural nuances, offer us a unique glimpse into the Japanese mindset, values, and traditions. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating stories from around the world. Until next time, keep the magic of stories alive. Goodbye, and take care.